invited to the table where Christ is host and offering. Let us prepare our hearts for the blessings of God. Welcome this night to this Monday Thursday service. Tonight we celebrate the Last Supper, Holy Communion. And for those of you who are joining us online, I do invite you, if you have not already, to prepare the elements to celebrate with us later in the service. They can be things readily available at home, such as bread and juice. For each of us, I do invite you, if you have not already, to make sure you fill out your Connect card and let us know that you're here with us this day. And if you have any prayer concerns or praises, we invite you to fill them out on the back and let us know. As we think about this time of holy week and season, please remember tomorrow night, we gather here again to celebrate Good Friday again at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. And of course, someone asked me tonight, why is Good Friday called Good Friday? Well, in part, because of Easter morning. And we begin celebrating 6.30 a.m. for our sunrise service in the courtyard right outside, just next to the sanctuary. And the celebration continues at 8, 9, 30, and 11 here in the sanctuary. We do invite you for Easter morning to bring with you cut flowers as you are able. There will be a cross outside that begins barren in the morning. And by 11 o'clock, it is filled with creation. Tonight, we do invite you to consider the offering. It goes to our higher education scholarships. And so from your giving this evening, those who will be putting in their applications for scholarships in just a few weeks, you will help support that which they receive. And so we invite you to give that to that this evening. And at the end of the service, please make sure to take your Connect card and your offering envelope and place them in the offering boxes as you leave. 
But as we enter into a time of service and celebration, let us stand, join our voices together as we sing, let us break bread together. Tonight, I'm going to be reading you Psalm 116, verses 1 through 9, and then I will jump a little forward to 12 to 13. Hear now the word of the Lord from the Bible. I love the Lord, for he hears my voice. He has heard my cries for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangle me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, return to your rest, my soul. For the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up my cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord.
All right, one more time. Our Monday Thursday scripture, the third time's the charm. Our Monday Thursday reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, beginning at verse 26. Hear now the word of God. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. When Jesus took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you, in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Holy and amazing God, pour your spirit upon all of us gathered online and here in the sanctuary. Gather our hearts near to your spirit. Open our minds to your wisdom and voice. Let our wills be shaped and formed by this story that reveals so much of who our Lord and Savior truly is in Jesus the Christ. Amen. I have to tell you, There's a TV show that has captured my attention. And the TV show has captured my attention not so much because of the kind of show it is, not because of the heartthrob lead actor, but because of the last five or ten minutes of the show. You see, this show always ends in a Sunday family dinner. Ooh, some of you guys know. Who knows? Just say it. You guys really know. I am so excited. It's the best part of the show. It's the best part of the entire show. If you're not familiar, Blue Bloods, which I'm not recommending for the show, except for the last five or 10 minutes, is um, a show with Tom Selleck, longtime heartthrob of many. Amen? Why are you amening that in church? <laughs> longtime heartthrob of many. Um, is the commissioner of the police in New York City. His whole family gathers around a Sunday dinner table at the end of every show, and they are a multi generation law enforcement family. And so whatever plays out in the show obviously impacts their individual lives. And then it always plays out at the dinner table. They argue at the dinner table. Has anyone ever argued over family dinner? Yes! They gripe at each other. They say, why did we bring four roasts and nobody brought dessert? They grieve at the table and talk about the ones who used to sit with them. They make space at the table. They invite guests and friends, and sometimes even new family member. You know those awkward people who marry in? They even let them have a seat at the table. They laugh at the table, they tell stories, they encourage each other, they challenge each other and they come together as family at the table. And then they pray. They pray 
at the table. It was interesting. I was reading a little bit about this part of um, about the show, and it is reported that the first thing they shoot in the show is actually this meal. So when they're doing each episode, they actually literally sit down and eat a meal together while they tape this part of the show, which is the ending of the show. And so they have taped and eaten the meal, and they know the ending of the hope and the coming together, and they know where it's headed before they do all the hard and crazy and stunt-related episodes, you know, in-between scenes that get to the end. How interesting is that? A meal to prepare for all that would come until we could be at the next meal again. Sounds like divine wisdom to me, amen? Amen. You see, we are told in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus would send his disciples ahead of him to go and to prepare a place to celebrate Passover. And it would be this Passover meal, this meal of their faith, this meal of storytelling and of remembrance and of celebration and of thanksgiving that they would gather to. That is the meal of the Last Supper. And the Passover, if you remember with me, is a remembrance of God's great act of redemption on behalf of the Israelites. It's a remembrance and a retelling of God's great work of redemption. It takes us back to the time when the Israelites were held captive in Egypt, when they were enslaved. And God calls Moses and he says, go to the Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And after some negotiation, some saying, I'm not going to do it, finally Moses says yes, kind of like us, right? Negotiation, not me. Okay, can I have some help, right? And finally he'll show up before Pharaoh, Moses says, and he says, let my people go. And we're told in scripture that Pharaoh's heart is hardened and he refuses, which then begins one of the worst parts of scripture, the ten plagues. You know, hail and blood, rivers and waters and, oh gosh, boils and bugs and frogs. And I mean, it's really bad, right? Really, really bad. And in between each one, of course, Moses goes back to Pharaoh and says, let my people go. And a plague will come and Pharaoh softens up a little bit, but then he never softens fully and says, no way, I'm not going to let your people go and I'm going to treat them even worse. And it gets worse before it gets better. Oh my goodness. And then the time comes when the people are instructed by Moses to take the blood of the lamb and put it over their doorposts. Because for that very night, the angel of death will pass over. Hear the word Passover. And where the blood of the innocent lamb is, there will be salvation and safety. And so the Israelites and their children are saved even when the angel of death passes over in Egypt. And then, as you know the story, uh, the people will go with Moses until they get to the Red Sea, and then they're like, there's no hope. We've got water in front of us, and the chariots and horses are right behind us. But the waters will be parted, and they will pass on dry land. And so when the people sit at the table and they share in the meal, when Jesus and his disciples are at this meal, They're telling the story of Passover. They're telling our story in the Old Testament of God's great work of redemption and of freeing the Israelites and bringing them to safety and calling them as a set-apart people to be a covenant people, the people of blessing. The people will be a blessing to all the nations so that all can come and know who this God is and be blessed by him and his presence. So it seems to be a fairly normal Passover dinner because Jesus is acting as the head of household and he's leading them through the Passover meal, but Jesus goes off script. And when he goes off script, the whole tone of the meal changes because one of the things he says is, 
one of you who is here with me is going to betray me. That changes the meal quickly, right? One of you is going to betray me. In fact, it's the one who's going to dip his hand in the bowl at the same time of mine. Now, I don't know if they knew anything about Emily Post. Actually, I know they didn't. But I know they soon lived her manners because there was no elbow on that table, amen? As soon as they said, the hand that dips with mine, all hands were off that table, not an elbow in sight. From then on, nobody reached. It was all, will you pass me the potatoes, right? Manners restored immediately. But Judas reveals himself at the meal as he says to Jesus, is it I, Lord? And Jesus says, and so it is. And so it is. Judas, one of the ones who had traveled and lived with them and had been friend, who had seen and heard and been trusted, would betray not just Jesus, but the whole family. Right? Not just Jesus, but the whole family. The meal would go on, and Jesus would go off script again as he would pick up the bread, and he would lift it to the heavens and thank God for it, and he would break it, and he would redefine it. He said, this bread is my body, which will be broken for you. And then he goes off script again as he picks up the cup and he lifts it to the heavens and he thanks God for it and he says, this cup is now a new covenant. It will be poured out for the forgiveness of sins. This is a new covenant. This is a pouring out of my blood. This is what I'm going to do for you. A meal of celebration and remembrance and storytelling became a reporting of a betrayal and now reveals further that there will be the departure impending of Jesus. This meal is not going according to the holiday planner. And then, near the end of the meal, Jesus will turn to Peter, who I think we very well could say was friend of Jesus close, close companion. And he says, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter responds and he says, I will die before I deny you. And Jesus just looks at him three times, Peter. You will deny me before the rooster crows. That very night, Jesus will be arrested They will already begin saying he should be put to death. And the disciples and followers will scatter in fear. And Peter will be cited by a servant girl. And and the servant girl will approach him and say, aren't you with that Jesus? And his reply, who are you talking about? And a second servant girl will see Peter and say, aren't you... One of those guys from Galilee, aren't you a follower of Jesus? And he will say, and who is that man? Who is that man? Until a third time, members of the crowd will approach Jesus, or approach Peter, I'm sorry. Members of the crowd will approach Peter and say, aren't you with Jesus? And he again will say, who is that man? And then the rooster crows. And with the crowing of the rooster comes the flooding of remembrance of all that Jesus had said and what he had said back to Jesus and what he had meant when he said it. Because he really did want to follow Jesus. He really did want to love him well. He really did want to pour his life out for him. But he had no idea how hard that is to live in this world especially when the threat is for your very life, when the threat draws near, when the finger's on you, 
how hard those moments truly are. And we're told that he would weep bitterly. His insides would be turned outside as tears poured from his shaking being. The whole family meal seems to have gone terribly, terribly wrong. Except this meal was said not to just be done once, but to be done in remembrance of me. It's a meal that's to be repeated, and we could very well think there's no way I'm going to show up at a meal like that. That meal's too messy, too dangerous, too many fingers pointing, too many people with problems at that meal. If we didn't tie the meal to Good Friday and the cross and Easter and resurrection, I wouldn't go to the meal either. But you see, just as we needed redeemed and creation needs redeemed, so the meal needed to be redeemed by resurrection and new life. For to have its fullest of meaning, for it to become the meal that it is today, a meal of joy and of thanksgiving, a meal where we know that we get to show up as sinners, because at the Last Supper there were already sinners there. A meal that where we know we can take all the ways that we have betrayed Jesus and still show up. A meal where we know that even though sometimes we deny Jesus in our action or our inaction, in our love or our not love, in our patience or in our lack of patience, can I go on? In all the ways we deny Jesus, we can still show up at the meal because the cup of the new covenant is for forgiveness of sin. Jesus never said, get cleaned up and then come to my meal. He says, come as you are to the table. For at this table, whether you're in a time of denying or betraying or somewhere in between or another issue that I, we're not even talking about tonight, this cup will be poured out to forgive you. It will be grace for whatever is separating you from the love of God tonight. There is grace at this table. And then along with the pouring out of the covenant would be the breaking of bread. And he would say, this is my body. And it reminds us that at the table, broken people always have a seat. People like us with broken spaces and broken places and broken hearts and broken spirits, there's place for us at this table because God does beautiful work in broken people. In fact, he'll take the broken pieces and just as God will restore and renew and resurrect Jesus the Christ's body so that which was broken is alive again, that which is broken becomes new creation, that which is broken becomes our eternal hope, so it is he works in our life to take our broken pieces and to mend us back together. And he'll even use those cracks and crevices and scars that we'll still carry. He'll use them for his ministry. Where we are weak, he will show his strength. Where we've had hurt, He'll allow us to empathize and to sit with others who suffer. Where we've had disappointment and failure and fear, he will give us the assurance of a time that will come, that will be a peace that we have yet to ever know. And so we can endure for a night. We can endure for a day. We can endure to the next time we come to this table. Because at this table that is redefined by Jesus' re resurrection, we are also redefined as God's people. Broken people restored. Sinners forgiven. The lost are found. Those without hope can overflow with hope. Those feeling low on love or unworthy of love can have their cup overflow with the unconditional love of Jesus the Christ and be loved in a community. We walk to the table alone or we sit at the table of our own choice. But once on the table, we are never alone again because we are in a family 
much greater than the family here. It's spread throughout the earth and throughout time. Some of it's on earth and some of our family are in heaven. It is a wide and big and deep family of humble people who said, who am I without a Lord and Savior? I choose Christ above all else. I choose Jesus above all else. I choose my Lord and Savior because of these next three days. Let us pray. Holy and amazing God, still this night you are the host of the meal, and still this night you will reinterpret the Passover meal to the meal we call Holy Communion, a meal of thanksgiving, of grace and forgiveness and new covenant and new life. Because of who you are and because of Easter morning, we come humbly, simply coming as we are. And thank you for receiving us and restoring us and loving us. Amen. You can stand if you like. If you want to sing along with us, please do. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue you begin. Run, find your mercy. O oh, sinner, come near, earth has no sorrow, and heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow, and heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Lay down your heart, 
may be seated. Following the liturgy of Holy Communion, you will be invited forward to receive the bread of life and the cup of joy. And so I invite you to join with me at this time and celebration. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Continuing with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus the Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Will those assisting with Holy Communion please come forward at this time? And as they come forward, we do invite you, if you are in these two sections right here, we're going to invite you as you come forward to come down this aisle right here 
And after you receive the bread and the cup to return by the side aisles, after you receive the bread of life and the cup of joy, we do invite you to kneel and pray as you feel so called. And there are baskets on either end for you to leave your empty communion cup. The same is here. For these two sections, we invite you to come down this center aisle right here and return by your side aisles. And then the same for these two sections right here to come down the center aisle to the table, return by your side aisle. When your communion host, when your hospitality host gets to your pew, that's your sign for you to stand and to come forward. We are grateful for this time of celebration of Holy Communion. I also uh, remind you that as you come forward and receive communion, if you would like to stand instead of kneel at the altar, you may also just stand and pray at the altar. If you need assistance by having communion brought to you, uh, that has already been planned. So as we serve up here, there's a team that will come out if there's someone who would like to be served in your pew. Let us set our hearts on this great gift of bread of life and cup of salvation. Taste and see that our Lord is good.
God of hope and God of life, God who will withhold nothing but will sacrifice himself on the cross, we thank you, we praise you, we ask for more of you. Thank you for healing this family meal and asking us to take, partake of it again and again and again, for it is a meal of hope and of grace and of thanksgiving with the risen Lord Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, O oh God, for inviting us to your table and for receiving us and renewing us and restoring us. Amen. Amen.
invite you to stand. stand. <laughs> Can we do that together? We invite wow. you to stand. <laughs> As we sing together, what wondrous love is this?
honor of Jesus' sacrifice that we will celebrate and remember tomorrow. May we go this night in silence and memory.